Before you start cleansing, the first thing that I recommend is always to shake our products and to begin with clean hands. You're gonna apply the product to dry skin. I'm gonna start by removing makeup for those of you that remove makeup. Um, this is just some suggested ways to do it. Of course, um, remove your makeup or cleanse your skin in ways that are more comfortable for yourself. Um, so I'm gonna start by shaking my product. Today I'm wearing liner and mascara. One of my favorite tricks that I like to use is I like to enlist the use of Q-tips. When we apply mascara, we're typically applying it on the front side of the lashes and sweeping it up. And when you're cleansing your skin, we're actually kind of sweeping down. So that underside where the mascara is actually at, it takes a little bit more effort to get it off, especially if you're wearing waterproof or you're wearing long lasting makeup. So I like to take the Q-tips and I like to just drench one Q-tip, not sure if you can see here, with cleansing oil. I allowed it to go ahead and soak up with the other um, Q-tip, I use two. One is going to stabilize my lashes. The other one is going to help buff and clean the lashes. And again, I like to always recommend that everybody be very careful with your lashes when you're removing makeup from your brows or when you're removing makeup from your lashes. You're over rough with your lashes or your brows and over time, then the hair no longer wants to grow back or doesn't grow back as strong. And as women, over time, as we begin to age, we start having thinner lashes and brows anyways. So you're going to put the dry Q-tip on the underside of the lash, and then you're just going to slowly swipe and roll up. Being very careful and mindful around the eyes, of course. And then you're able to get just a little bit more of that makeup off. Another way that you can remove your makeup is by enlisting a um, reusable facial pad, which we have these available here at Bamboo Earth. These are two-ply. They're 100% cotton. They're very soft and wonderful or you can use just a regular cotton round or cotton ball. Again, whichever is more comfortable for yourself. I'm gonna put some of the product on your facial pad or on your cotton round. And then you can gently place it on the eye and press. And you're gonna hold for just a few seconds. If you're wearing waterproof makeup, I would suggest waiting about five to 10 seconds and then slowly rolling and rubbing it downward and outward of the eye. It helps pull off all of that dirt. And then of course we get the dreaded under eye. So you're gonna swipe, you're gonna roll it in half. I call this the hamburger roll, put your finger inside there. And then just brace the eye. If you have more um, el lost elasticity in the skin, Brace the eye underneath the eye and gently swipe upward and out. Of course, being very mindful around the eye. We don't want to get any type of oil or product inside of the eye. Your eye will begin to flush in water. Same thing with the brow. Go ahead and press. Allow that oil and the heat from your skin and the oil to go ahead and break down some of that makeup. And then gently swipe and wipe off. There you go. I like to do the same thing for the lips. Again, you can enlist the use of Q-tips in. If you're wearing um, more pigmented lipsticks or if you're wearing matte or something that's long lasting, especially if it's red, when we begin to move it, it smears and goes all over the face and gets the face a little bit more dirty than it is more clean. So again, another way that you can do it is by the Q-tips. This helps stop making sure that you're gonna get any oil too deeply into the mouth for you to eat it. I would like to brace the lip and you're just rubbing and pulling it off. You could also do that with the cotton round again. And you're gonna just hold and press onto the skin. Now for those of you that don't wear makeup or if now you just have the base part of your makeup on, again, always starting with clean hands. You're gonna take your makeup dirt and cleansing oil and place it into your non-dominant hand. You could also apply it directly to the skin. However, I do wanna give a caution that this pipette here, not to touch that with, with your hand or touch it to your skin, you wanna avoid cross-contamination. We usually recommend about a quarter size amount in your hand. And then I like to warm it, spread it all over the hands. And then you're gonna place it all over the skin don't forget your throat and on your decollete. These are often overlooked areas. 
And this is often the places that we see um, premature aging begin. If you need to apply more oil at any time, please do so. You want to make sure that you're able to gently and um, glide across the skin without any tugging or pulling. You want to actually be able to make sure that you have some slip mirror coming off the skin. And then you'll just work it into the skin just as you would any other face cleanser. Um, just massaging in upward and outward uh, motions, making sure to get into those areas that you may have some congestion at or you may have some excess oil in. Again, the Makeup Dirt and Cleansing Oil breaks down not just makeup. It's also going to break down sunscreen or other impurities that you come in contact with during the day. I like to pay extra attention here to the lip line, especially if you wear lipsticks or lip glosses. We tend to get those um, clogged pores and it makes it harder for us to get that nice crisp line if you do um, wear um, like lip liner or lipsticks. Being very gentle on the eye area, of course, you want to go around the eye, soft and smooth and upward, outward motions. If you have some elasticity in the skin or a loss of collagen already, brace the skin in any of those areas. You just want to make sure you don't have any, no pulling, no tugging on the skin. Once you've done that for about a minute, Go ahead and clean off your hands. And then you're gonna list the friends of either a facial washcloth, make sure that it's soft and gentle, or you can use our facial pads. We have these reusable facial pads that have two sides to them. They're really wonderful. You wanna use really warm, but not steaming water. You can press it into the skin, so then that way the warm water can help evict some of that off. And then you can use gentle upward and outward motions as well. Once one side of the pad is coated with oil and you're taking it off, reuse the other side. And then rinse and wring out your rag as needed. Once you know all the oil is off your skin, your skin should feel soft and smooth and supple, but it shouldn't feel oily or greasy at all. It should feel nice and clean, taut but not tight. So one of the most common questions or problems that I get asked about the makeup, dirt, and cleansing oil is, do I need to remove this? And the answer is yes, mainly because that's part of the cleansing process. We don't want to leave oil and our dirt and our debris and our makeup on our skin. The oil itself is to break down all of those impurities, and then the water and the facial washcloth is to help remove and evict those away from the skin. So the rose water cleanser is really easy to use. Before each use, please make sure that you shake it every time. We don't use any binders or fillers or anything in our products. We wanna make sure that we shake them um, prior to. Um, you can use either our reusable facial pads. These are two ply and they're 100% organic cotton. Or you can use a cotton round or a cotton ball, whichever is your preference, or a facial washcloth, something that's soft and smooth that can be used on the skin. Um, I like to go ahead and take it directly from the bottle. You can place it on top. I'm going to turn it over and allow it to get onto the pad. I normally do, um, you know, about two to three soaks is the best way to explain it. You want it to have enough product on the pad where it does soak through on the other side. You're going to use one side for most of your face and then use the other side for the rest of the face. So be sure to cleanse uh, your face, your throat, and your decollete. These areas are often overlooked, and these are areas that we often have um, signs of premature aging sooner in life. You're going to apply it by swiping it in upward and outward motions on the skin. I like to use the first side of the pad for the decollete as well as my throat up to the jawline. And then using the other side of the pad for the rest of the face, if you have um, looser skin or if you have a little bit of loss of collagen or elastin in the skin, you can brace the skin. We want to avoid any type of tugging or pulling. If you have more sensitive skin, you can do what I call as a press and bounce where you're just pressing and moving it across the skin. This is also beneficial if you have um, breakouts or any type of wounds on the skin. 
Once you've already applied it to the skin, we suggest that you rinse and remove the rose water cleanser using tempid water. Some people don't rinse the rose water cleanser off. The preference is entirely up to you. However, we encourage you to remove it. One of the reasons why we suggest that you remove the rose water cleanser is so then that way it's prepped and ready to go for the next step. Um, and you don't leave any um, film or residue on the skin. And that's it. You can also remove the rose water cleanser by just rinsing and splashing the skin with water if you don't want to use a facial pad or a facial washcloth to remove it. So some of the common problems that we hear about the rose water cleanser is, do I actually need to remove this? And the answer is, it's entirely up to you. We highly encourage you to remove the rose water cleanser after using it. It can help remove any excess bacteria or sebum or anything else left over on the skin. It also makes sure that there's no film left on the skin at any at all, usually due to human error. Just it's just what happens. Um, but if you feel comfortable and if your skin enjoys it, you can leave the rose water cleanser on your skin before moving on to your next step. One of the other problems that we get asked a lot about the rose water cleanser is, what is this actually doing for my skin? Is it cleansing at all? And the answer is yes. Just in case if there's anything left over or residual oil from your oil cleanser. The rose water cleanser will ensure that all that grime and bacteria is gone from the day. And if not, it's going to help ensure that all the water-based impurities from your skin are gone. To apply the rosemary toner, first, gently shake the product before each use. You can use either our reusable facial pads. These are wonderful. They're two-ply. Or you can use any type of basic cotton round or cotton ball, your preference. After you've shaken the product, apply it to your um, cotton pad. I like to do about three dips. And then you're just going to apply it to the skin. Please don't skip the decollete or the throat. Those are common areas that we can have um, aging or premature aging. And you're just going to swipe the product on the skin in upward motions. If your skin is a bit more sensitive, you can even press and push it into the skin. Be sure to get all areas of the skin. There's no need to remove this product. Leave it on the skin. So when you're applying the rosemary toner, it should feel nice and cool to the skin. It has that slight astringent smell to it. Um, it's very lovely and a little back of the rosemary you can smell onto it. Um, it shouldn't sting, it shouldn't hurt, you shouldn't have any type of pain or irritation when applying it to the skin. Some of the common problems that we hear about the rosemary toner is that it has a very unique aroma. The rosemary toner it has apple cider vinegar, alcohol-free witch hazel, and those have a little bit more of an astringent and stronger aroma that it takes a while to get used to if you aren't used to natural products, although many of our customers find it delightful. The rosemary toner shouldn't have any sensations on the skin. If you do feel tingling, it may mean that your skin barrier is compromised, so please reach out to us. We're happy to help. Another common problem we hear about the rosemary toner is, should we rinse this off? And the answer is no. Allow the product to dry naturally to the skin before moving on to the next step in your routine. The rosemary toner sometimes can be cloudy, and there's no need to worry. It has raw, organic apple cider vinegar in it, and those little wispies and the cloudiness is what we call the mother. It's actually the host and it has all of those great enzymes that make this product so wonderful for your skin. It's very easy to use the Intense Hydration Facial Mist. Make sure you gently shake prior to each application and then you're just gonna mist your skin. Don't skip on your decollete in your throat and three to five mist is pretty good to get all over most areas. If you have dehydrated skin, we suggest that you saturate the skin before applying your moisturizer. And then once you have the mist on, immediately follow with your favorite serum and your moisturizer. Some of the common problems we hear about the intense hydration facial mist is how much do I use? And we suggest that you use three to five mists. Please don't skip your decollete or your throat. If you have more dehydrated skin, then we suggest saturating your skin, so you may need some more mist 
and then follow immediately with your serum or your moisturizer. We do not suggest leave it letting the intense hydration facial mist dry on your skin. Follow immediately with your serum or your moisturizer of choice. And when it goes onto the skin, it's going to feel nice and cool and refreshing and calming. It's very beautiful on the skin. To use the Intense Hydration Cactus Concentrate, first we highly suggest that you mist your skin with the Intense Hydration Facial Mist or filtered water. Be sure not to skip your decollete or throat. I have dehydrated skin, so I, we suggest if you have dehydrated skin to generously saturate your skin. The Intense Hydration Cactus Concentrate, it comes with this little spatula. It helps reduce cross-contamination in your product. Dispense just a little bit. A little goes a long way. When you apply it to your hands, go ahead and um, emulsify the product to make sure that it becomes nice and smooth and then press it into the skin. It's very um, fast absorbing and it's smooth on the skin. It feels very cool and refreshing. If you use too much, don't have any fear. Just re-mist yourself with the Intense Hydration Facial Mist. Or you can blot the skin with tissue. Don't rub, just blot. Pick up the excess that you, um, you've used. And then next time, just use a little less. That's it. The Intense Hydration Cactus Concentrate has like a really great rainforesty kind of green tropical scent to it. And some customers, um, if you're new to natural products, they may not enjoy the aroma, although most of our customers really do. It has really wonderful skin nourishing benefits that so we hope that you continue to use the product as well and hopefully you'll enjoy it too. So one of the common problems is using too much of the Intense Hydration Cactus Concentrate. That will um, make it feel too oily or too greasy on the skin. Using a little goes a very long way. The Intense Hydration Cactus Concentrate is a pressed serum so it's very smooth and it um, breaks down or it melts very easy as an oil. Um, once the product comes to you during shipping, because we don't use any stabilizers or preservatives or fillers in any of our products, it's just raw, organic, and natural ingredients, it may melt to you during transition. When it melts down, it could have little kind of beads in it where the oils and the butters separate. But have no fear, it's still good. You can totally use it. You just need to remelt the product down. Um, make sure every last bead is melted down and then pop it back in the refrigerator so that it can re-solidify. The Dead Sea Mud Mask, you want to use about a dime size amount. I like to use a little spatula. You can either apply this directly to the skin, um, first by putting it in your hands, or if you have more blemishes or cystic acne that may be painful, you can also dispense it on a small plate and then apply it with a fan brush. And then I was going to show both ways on both sides of my skin. So once you have your amount that you're dispensed on, I suggest that you um, wet or dampen the skin. You can use it with filtered water or you can use our Intense Hydration Facial Mist. Those are really great options. Get a little bit of the product on your hand. Go ahead and wet and move it. You want to add just a thin, even layer onto the skin. If you have more acne or if you have um, any painful blemishes, this is also a great one that you can apply with a facial um, brush. You want to apply the product in a really thin consistency and upward outward motions all over the skin. You can also use this as a spot treatment as well. So if you only have a few blemishes in a couple spots, just kind of put it on there where it may be at. Or it can be used anywhere on the face. Just want to be sure that you don't get it too far into the eye area. Our eye skin is really delicate. Those that have aging concerns on their throat or on their decollete, you don't have to skip it out. The dime size amount is great if you're going to use this mask just on your face, but you can increase it to using about a quarter size amount. I have it like here on this little plate. 
And for those of you that are concerned with fine lines or wrinkles and aging on the throat and neck area, jawline and decollete, you can use this mask in all of those areas as well. It's going to increase it's going to increase the stimulation um, and circulation to the skin. So it may bring some mild redness or erythema. All right, so then once you have it applied to the skin, again, you want to apply it in a very thin application in upward, outward motions, and then allow, allow the mask to dry or set. It should take about five to 10 minutes. And then you and I have a break until it actually starts to dry, unless you want to keep me, have me keep talking. When it starts to dry, it will start getting lighter in color, won't be as dark. It normally takes five to 10 minutes for the mask to completely finish drying. Don't leave the mask on any longer than the 10 minutes though, or it can start pulling out additional oils from the skin and we don't want to have increase any oil production. We just want to help maintain and balance your skin. All right, so once the mask is all dry, you can see I applied it too thick there, that's okay. But it's dry everywhere else on the skin. You're just gonna take a facial pad or some type of facial washcloth. And I like to re-moisten and re-wet the mask. That way there's less tugging and pulling when you remove it, and then it wipes off much more cleanly. This mask also offers a gentle exfoliation while you're applying it and while you're removing it because it has that stony, kind of slightly gritty feel to it. And then you can see in the areas that the mask is at, there'll be a, what's called mild erythema or some redness, some pinkiness to the skin. And that's from that increase of circulation, this, that increase of blood flow um, to the skin. When you're removing your mask, I, um, I recommend just removing it in upward and outward motions. Rule of thumb, we never really want to pull down or drag on the skin. We want to always make sure that we're encouraging it to remain youthful and upright. And that's it. So some of the common concerns that people will have with the Dead Sea Mud Mask is that it feels really thick and it's difficult to apply. Um, the skin should be moist or damp prior to applying it, and that will help thin out the mask and make it easier to um, apply in upward, outward motions in a thin, even layer across the skin. Another common objective that we get for the Dead Sea Mud Mask is that it dries out. So when, in between uses of using the mask, we suggest making sure that the lid is on correctly and the lid is tight um, and to reduce its air exposure so it will stay fresh and ready to apply. In case your Dead Sea Mud Mask does dry, it's okay. There's no need to fear. You can add just a little bit of filtered water or mist it a few times with our Intense Hydration Facial Mist to revive the mask. Some people will say that the mask is a little overstimulating. The Dead Sea Mud Mask is overstimulating and um, feels a little tingly. That's completely normal. There's a lot of minerals and magnesium and salt in the Dead Sea Mud Mask, and that's increasing the circulation to the skin very quickly which may be uncomfortable for some people. Our Dead Sea Mud Mask has a really deep, earthy, um, and mud aroma to it. There it also contains tea tree essential oil and lavender essential oil, so you may pick up on some floral notes as well as some of more of astringent notes to it. 